on the site planning vignette, um, can the plaza or garden uh, be any crazy shape as long as it is within the required square footage uh, and meets all of the required adjacencies? And then another question, is it possible to put in too many trees to screen wind and views on the site planning vignette? And does the surface road have to be in a very particular relationship to the building? Um, on this first part, uh, the, the plaza can in fact be um, uh, essentially any shape. Um, the giant caveat to that though is that if the, if the plaza gets too thin, uh, I'm not sure how the computer reads it. I'm not sure if it reads it less as a, not as a plaza, but as a walkway um, and therefore uh, falls into a different category. So I would try your darndest to make it a reasonable shape of a, of a plaza. Um, there's no reason why you can't be sort of fluid um, with it, but um, it's just hard to know exactly what the, what the parameters are specifically. Like if you get it down to say five feet wide, um, my guess is that the computer looks at that and says, that's not a plaza, that's a, that's a sidewalk. Um, so uh, I would just be careful about that kind of thing. But if it's a, a Z shape in a, you know, some way or some kind of something along those lines or big L, um, that's all fine as long as you're meeting all those other issues, square footages and, and the adjacencies. And even the square footages, you know, you have a 10% play, which is actually quite a lot. Uh, so, um, you know, I wouldn't be overly concerned about it, um, but you do want to make sure that it, that it, you know, is reasonably close to, to the required uh, amounts. Um, the other reason to try to keep it as straightforward as you can is just in general, uh, the simpler your plan is, the easier it's going to be on you while you're doing it. Um, if you can keep it fairly simple and straightforward, uh, you know, a simple rectangle, a simple maybe, you know, L with a small leg or something, um, it's just going to be more straightforward for you while you're doing it. It's easier for your brain to understand that it's there and the scale of it and what can go up next to it. Um, and also, if you have to change something down the road later, the more crazy that plaza is, uh, just, it's just harder to make it uh, work if you have to change one thing. Now I have to like, really think about all the different shapes, possibilities. Whereas if I start with something that's nice and simple and straightforward, if I have to then push it around a little bit and make it a little crazy, that's okay. So that's what I would say about that, is try to keep it as straightforward as you can, but you actually do have quite a bit of, uh, of flexibility on it. Uh, the second part, is it possible to put in too many trees to screen wind and views? Um, the answer to that is yes and no. Uh, the reason no is no, you can put in as many trees as you want. Um, the reason to say yes is that the more trees you put in, first of all, you're, you're, you're sort of going beyond what you need to do. All you really need to do is just show that you understand the idea that uh, certain kinds of trees, which, think about it, which trees, if you're trying to uh, block uh, wind and, and uh, views, those can't be deciduous trees, those have to be uh, um, coniferous trees, right, because they have to be uh, down low where, the, where you want to block the view and the wind. Um, so you have to choose the right kind of tree. Um, and, you know, if you're trying to block a, a wind pattern, if you put, say, uh, three trees uh, 15 feet apart from each other, uh, and then uh, two trees set back from those in the, in the void spaces between them, that's, uh, those five trees are going to block any wind conceptually that we want to get into. Um, uh, so, uh, so what I was saying there is if I do three trees and then I do two more, right? Any wind, that, if the wind is coming this way, uh, and I have my plaza or something here, that's fine. You don't need to do 100 trees. And if you do 100 trees, you're likely to put a tree someplace that causes a problem. You're likely to put a tree in a place you're not allowed to, to put it, or it's gonna be in, you're gonna have to move the road for some reason that you didn't expect, and now you're cutting out a tree. If I put a tree in and then I kill it, it's just like a, I'm killing a tree that was already there. Um, so don't overdo it, just put in what you need. Uh, something like I just sketched is more than enough. You could probably just do the three, um, uh, but you know, that's plenty. Uh, and then does the service road have to be uh, 20 feet perpendicular to the building or can it run parallel? Um, you know, I'm not actually 100% sure about this one. I do know that the, uh, the um, best scenario is that it's perpendicular 
Um, but my guess is, is that it can also be um, parallel. Um, uh, but what I would look for is a specific wording in the code because it could actually be different on different exams um, and that it would have to be, tell you that it had to be perpendicular in this kind of setting. So uh, if, the, if the, the road has to be coming perpendicular off of, if this is now our building, um, it has to be coming perpendicular, it'll say something in the code uh, requirements. Um, but I do believe you can uh, have it come up uh, uh, parallel but uh, the perpendicular is definitely the preferred, preferred choice. Today's ARE Live episode is an extension of our online ARE curriculum that you can find on blackspectacles.com, the home of online learning for architecture and design. If you need to prepare for the ARE, which I assume many of you guys do, and if you're looking for a good way to study for the exam that's more flexible and easier to digest than the traditional exam prep materials, then head over to blackspectacles.com to try out any of our free ARE video tutorials that are taught by tonight's presenter, Mike Newman, and that are built in collaboration with AIA Chicago. As an attendee, and as you can see here on the screen here, we have a couple of notes or information for today's episode. Anyone who is attending today's session, you're eligible to use this coupon code worth 15% off the first charge on your individual membership. If you're one of those folks who would like for your firm to purchase Black Spectacles access for you and your colleagues, just visit blackspectacles.com business, which is this fourth link here, and we'll send all the information for your firm to get set up. And also from now until the 15th of next month, firm memberships are 15% off if you mention this episode when you submit your form through blackspectacles.com. Also on this, you'll see that our next webinar will be on May 27th with Mike at 6 o'clock. So if you'd like to register for it, here's the registration link. We're still firming up the details and the actual topic. So if you have any suggestions and would like Mike to cover a specific topic or would like us to interview someone in particular about a specific topic, please let us know. 